So in that last video, we wrote our very first program, which is awesome, but we're not software engineers yet. We're not totally ready to pass the 36% that makes up the apex portion of this exam. So let's do something a little more interesting. And let's talk about a fundamental part of not only apex development, but programming in, in general. And that is the concept of variables. So if you think back really hard and you remember seventh grade or sixth grade, if you were one of the advanced students, you would remember learning about variables. And the concept was really simple, right? A variable was really a placeholder. So if I had a variable called x in algebra class, we could set that variable to a value. And then we could use that variable later on in a statement like x plus 5. And we would know that whenever we saw the variable x to reference the value that was associated with it before. So we would know by reading x plus 5, we would know the answer is 15 because we can substitute x for 10. And that's really how variables work in programming languages as well. You can create a variable as long as you give it a type. And what Apex does and what Salesforce does behind the scenes is it finds a little spot of memory on the server and it creates a pointer pointing to that spot in memory, names that pointer x, and then stores in that spot of memory it created this value. So every time you say x, it knows where to go in memory and it knows after that what value to read. Really, really simple. So how do we actually do this? Because if I tried to hit execute right now, this code would not compile. If you don't believe me, there you go. So in Apex, we need to give these variables types. So there's a lot of different variable types out there. For now, we'll just focus on four main ones. And those are integers, decimals, doubles, and forgot one, long. So integer and long are ways that you can hold whole numbers. You'll usually use an integer if you have a smaller whole number, and you'll usually use long if you have a really big whole number. You'll use decimals if you obviously have a decimal value, and you'll use doubles if you have a really big deci decimal value. And the reason there are these different types is because, again, when I said that Salesforce goes and creates a piece of memory for you, it uses the type to determine how much memory to allocate. And if that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, don't necessarily worry about it. That's a whole class in a lot of different computer science and software engineering lectures. Just know that whenever you create a variable, um, there are types that you create the variable as. And then one thing that I skipped is that once you declare the type, you need to give that variable a name. So for this first one, I'll give the variable name x. And we'll use the equal sign, which in Apex is the assignment operand. So this, and once I add a semicolon, now this is a valid line in Apex. What it says is to Salesforce, hey, I'm going to create a variable called x that I want you to keep track of for me. That variable x is of type integer, and I want you to give it the value of 10. So same thing here for long, same thing here for decimal, and same for double. And you can name these variables whatever you want for the most part. They can't start with numbers, so you can't have a variable like that. And they can't start with any special characters. They do have to start with a letter. And usually you'll see variables of this type in camel case. So what that means is that the first word will be lowercase. And as soon as you start writing a new word all in one sentence, you'll uppercase that next first letter. So this will be called my variable. And if for this one, I want to call it my second variable. That's what camel case looks like. Also important to note, you can't put spaces in this. Otherwise, it doesn't know how to handle that. But we got it. We got the basic gist of it. So let's focus on integer. And if you understand this one, you'll understand the other ones. Oops, I forgot one. I forgot to talk about strings, which I want to mention really quick. String is another variable type we have available to us in Salesforce and in Apex. A string is a way for you to hold a set of characters. So if I had a string called my name, just like that, I now have a variable called my name. And if I did a system.debug on my name, and I executed that piece of code, the expectation is that as soon as it's done running and I hit debug only, I should be able to see my name. There it is. Cool. So we'll come back and talk about that. But for now, let's talk about integers and see if we can make more sense of variables. So I have an integer called x, and I want to set x equal to 5. 
what you can do now is do mathematical operations on x. So if I wanted to do x plus 5 and create a new variable called sum, this is how I can take the value of x, add a number to it, and then store this new value in a whole nother variable. So if I did a system debug called sum, I would hope that this would print out 15 for me. It did. So you can do x plus 5. x minus 5 would get us just printed out 5. You could do multiplication. You can do division. The possibilities are really endless here. Another thing to explore is that in the system debug, you can do concatenation. So if I had a lot of different debug statements and I wanted to help identify which one is which, I can mix variables with string literals. So if I had just the text sum, I could use the plus sign to combine the integer sum with the text literal sum. So that way, whenever I open up the debug logs, I could see the word sum followed by the actual sum. Now let's see what happens if I try to execute this piece of code. Oh, the sum is 2. And that's what we'd expect, because 10 divided by 5 is 2. So hopefully these concepts are slowly starting to make some sense. So let's take it up just a little bit and try to do something a little more advanced. So if we type in system.debug and say, I am going to divide, I can put a space, do plus, and I can put x here. Or let's do, instead of division, let's do add. I'm going to add. I can't make up my mind, guys. I'm going to perform x. And we're going to need another plus sign here. Plus another plus sign. Well, actually, in this one, that's what we want. OK. Before I run these four different lines, let's think about what might happen. On line one, Salesforce creates a variable called x of type integer and gives that variable x the value 10. From there, line 3 executes. And it says, print out a debug statement. Print out, I am going to perform space, grabs the value of x, which we know should be 10, plus 5. So this would read, I'm going to perform 10 plus 5. On line 5, we are doing a calculation. We're taking the value of x, which is 10, adding 5 to it, storing that in a new variable called sum. And then we're going to do another system debug where we concatenate the string literal sum colon space, concatenate that with the new variable we created called sum. And just for fun, let's try out a couple different ways that we can write this. Instead of using the variable sum, sum what we could do instead is directly do the operation in here. OK, so it says I'm going to perform 10 plus 5. Obviously, I missed adding a space there. Huh, but here it said sum 15, which is what we expected to see. And then here it said sum is 105. Let's figure out why that might have happened. Well, the reason it printed out 105 is because it's not actually adding 10 plus 5 here. What it's doing is it's taking the value 10 and adding it to the string, and then taking the value 5 and adding it to the string, not adding it to a variable or adding it to some data store that's keeping track of the calculation, but it's literally grabbing the value 10 and it's literally grabbing the value 5. So this is reading as 10 and 5. So that's a little bit of a nuanced difference there. But other than that, and other than that missing space, it behaved as we expected it to, which is pretty cool. You'll notice so far what I've been doing is creating the variable and initializing it on the same line. I do want to point out that that's not required. What you could do is create your variable called x and not give it a value. Other, in other words, not initialize it. And then in another line of code, do your initialization of that variable. OK, great. So you can do this, but what are the implications of it? None of your actions, whenever you're writing code, are just going to go unbothered and unchecked. There are consequences to every decision you make whenever you write code. What happens here is, as I mentioned, Salesforce goes and it creates a spot in memory and uses a pointer called x to point to that location in memory. But the other part of that process was to put a value in that spot of memory. 
but it won't do that until line two. So you can say that this value x, right now, its value is the term null. And null in different programming languages, and especially in Apex, means that the value does not exist. It has never been set, it has never been known, it is absolutely nothing. Not to say it's necessarily empty, but it's more of as it's truly nothing. So here, if I did a system.debug on x, I wouldn't get a blank space, I would get the value of null. So let's see if that happens. So just to hit that point one more time, whenever we have a variable that the value is null, what that means is the variable has been created and it's pointing to something, but whatever it's pointing to, that spot in memory it's pointing to, doesn't have a value in there. And so what are the implications of that? Well, now if I try to do the same line of code before I initialize this variable, let's see what happens. And let's try to print out the sum. So again, I've declared x, but I've never initialized it. Let's see how it behaves. A attempt to dereference a null object. So what this is telling you is, hey, I tried to go in, I tried to grab x, listen, I know it exists, but as soon as I tried to reference it, I threw an error because I can't reference a null object. It doesn't exist, there's nothing to reference, so how could I do anything with it? So this is something you really need to be careful for as you start writing more code. One thing that you can do is do null checks, which we'll get into in more detail later, but I really just wanted to talk about the implications of creating a variable on one line, but then not actually declaring the value of it. If I ran the similar piece of code, but I did initialize x before I tried to reference it on line 4, I would not expect to get the error anymore, and I did it. Okay, so that's just really the basics of it. There's still a lot more to learn, so I'll see you in the next sections.